Welcome to my first video into the realm of penetration testing and hacking. Follow along as I learn the tools and techniques required to successfully complete various capture the flag scenarios of increasing difficulty. I do have a background in system administration and website development dating back to the mid 90s, but until now I've never attempted to break into computer systems. I started my journey much like a lot of you by watching YouTube videos. I watched a lot of CTF walkthrough videos and other resources for learning penetration testing. One of the best resources I found on YouTube is the Cyber Mentor. He has lots and lots of videos on penetration testing, on running the business. He does it full time. He's a fellow veteran and an excellent educator. He has a nice 15 hour course on beginner net network penetration testing, uh, which I watched and learned a lot from. It takes you down from not only the methodologies used in penetration testing, but gets into the, the, the steps, the documentation, things to look out for if you want to do this as a business. Um, like I said, I'm new with this. This is way beyond me at this point, but uh, this is a journey. So I started out with on Vulnhub by using a beginner level capture the flag machine called me and my girlfriend one this will be a walkthrough I did solve it last night so I do know how it works now but it, it took me a few hours to finally do it um, obviously a more experienced uh, hacker would be able to do this in, in a matter of just minutes because it was very simple once I figured it out okay so the description says that we're looking to get into a company uh, company's computer of a user named Alice uh, it's beginner level and there are two flag files so I have the machine up and running here on my virtual machine I also have my Kali running on a virtual machine they are on the same network so they can see each other which is helpful so if we begin um, we have to find out where we are and where this machine is so we'll run a nif config alright we're at 10.0.2.4 Okay, so we'll do a quick nmap scan to see where the other machine is. Okay, 2.6 is our other virtual box. I'm not going to go in depth on how to use these tools because there's a lot better resources out there than, than me. I'm just showing you what the steps that I took and the tools I used to capture these two flags. Okay, so now that we do know what the uh, IP address of the machine is, let's do another nmap scan, find out what ports we have available. Now you can do a, 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 an aggressive scan or an all scan here, but that takes quite a long time and I just want to know what ports are out there. Oops, not 15. What did I say it was? 6. Okay, so I was scanning all ports. We have two open, 22 SSH and 80. We have a web service. All right, let's do a more in-depth scan on just those two ports. And see what we come up with. Now, I don't know, I know Alice is who we're trying to break into, but I don't know if that's where the login username is or anything, so I'm not even going to attempt the SSH right now. All right, so we have the SSH port 80 showing us H Apache 2.4.7. It's an older version, so I might be able to use Metasploit to find some vulnerabilities into there, um, which, to be honest, I did try that when I first started out, but uh, the solution turned out to be much more simple. Okay, so now we have the IP address. Let's venture to the website and find out what we have. Okay, not much help there. This site can only be accessed local. That is a big clue right there. So if we look at the page source, the author of this virtual machine actually put in a big clue by telling maybe we can search for this X forwarded for. Now I knew what the X forwarded for header is and 
the only question I had was how to implement it. Now I took way too much time trying to figure this one out. I used Burp Suite. I tried to add the X444 header manually and it would never, it wasn't working. So this one I did break down and look online and I figured out it was a lot more simple than I was making it. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Now what I also did was I did a typical Durbuster scan so we could find out what other resources might be available on this machine. 2.6 we'll use the standard Durbuster directory files user share Durbuster word list just the smallest fine and we'll just leave everything else as default okay we'll look at the founds okay we've already got this miscellaneous processes.php we've got an icons folder uh, the index page is an index PHP but from the source you can see we didn't learn much there so let's look at this miscellaneous Oh, we get a directory search. This isn't very secure, and people with more experience probably would be able to use this to their advantage. But for me, I knew I could see the directory, but pricking, bringing up processes doesn't do anything. Page source wasn't giving me any hints. Go back to our Durbuster. Now we also got a config folder to config.php. Well, that's more more clues. So again, the directory searching is on config.php. If I click on it, again, not giving me any information. Okay, the version of Apache 2.4.7, that's a little older. There might be vulnerabilities there. Okay, I'm going to stop this because it didn't come up with anything else. If we look at uh, the icons folder, nothing there because no, icons came back 403 okay so what do we know we know that the home page can only be accessed local and from our source we know we need to use this x forward and forward to get there so what I found out was if I simply go into Firefox to the extensions and Chrome has one too and do a search for X forwarded for there's an extension where you can set this header right in your browser okay I'll add it to my first okay then if I set my IP address to local 127001 in the X forwarded for header and then reload the page, boom, we're in. We're into this point. All right, so now we have home, login, register, about. About just talks about this company. Login gives you a login prompt. Again, there's probably some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities here. I don't know. And I tried a few things, but um, I wasn't able to get very far with that. However, there is a register link. So I went in here and I tried oops, just adding a fake name test test. And it let me register. So for now, if I do test to test, boom, I can log in. All right. So now we have a dashboard, a logout, and a profile. So again, there's probably there may be some vulnerabilities here with the P, where I could put PHP code in right here, um, cross-site scripting, um, but the solution was actually quite a bit easier than that. Up here, if we look at our URL, it says that our user ID is number 12. What happens if we change our user ID to number one? Oh look, we get somebody else, and this password is obviously easily viewed just by going to the elements 
changing our box from a password. Well, we have the, the password actually right there, but we can see it on the screen just by changing that to a text box. There's that password. So we're looking for Alice. So we'll run up the users. Oops. Sunday T. And here's Alice. Okay. We'll look, see what her password is. And we can see it's 4LIC3. All right. So now if we go back to our SSH terminal and give this a shot. Password 4LIC3. Oops. 4LIC3 and boom we're in. Okay, a quick search here, don't see anything there. If I do a L S A L oh look, my secret folder. Hmm, wonder what that could be. And here is our first flag. Alright. Last job is to get access to root and read root flag. Now this is where I went down some rabbit holes. I went back to the login page, the profile page, and was able to bring up the some of the other profiles. I got into the MySQL server, I could look at all the tables, I could look at all the users, but in the end it didn't really help much. Poking around in the system more, I found that um, I could look at Etsy password, especially if I could type. And we see we have another of other rooms, another users like Sunday T, Yu Tang, and all that. However, I could not look at the shadow file. And as a beginner, I kind of had to look at the methodology for escalating my privileges now that I'm into the machine. One of the good resources here, right on the Vulnhub site is this article about privilege, privilege escalation cheat sheet. It, it has 13 steps. It doesn't tell you exactly how to do it, but it gives you a good path to follow. Um, abusing pseudo rights, the set UID bid, bit, etc. MySQL, which I had access to MySQL, but uh, it didn't give me any information as far as um, how to do it on this machine. One key I saw was this one though, which is a writable Etsy password file. So obviously I looked at that and if I look at the Etsy password, it I can read it, but root is the only one that can write it. So I looked at what privileges I had as sudo and lo and behold I see that I can run PHP as root with no password. Well this was a huge leap forward for me. Now I am familiar with PHP. I apologize that the video jumps around a bit. I am new to creating YouTube videos so please bear with me. Okay so once I realized that I had root access through PHP not even requiring a password it came pretty obvious and easy on how I could crack this machine. The first thing I did was I used my new ability, my new found ability. Oops, I did doing that. To do a simple PHP command line. And access my shadow. boom there's my shadow file. At this point I had the thought well 
see as I have root access, it would just simply be a matter of uploading or, or downloading the root hash here, which I did, and I started to run it through um, a couple different crackers that come with Kali. And I got a short way into it when it dawned on me that I'm doing this a lot more, I'm making this a lot harder than it needs to be. So if we get down to our user Alice, we know what this password is, so we know what this hash is. So if I simply copy Alice's hash, okay, we have access to Etsy password, so I'm going to copy here. Um, now because I copied Etsy password, I now have write access to it. So if I go into Etsy password, this is a local copy again, go to root, take out the X for the shadow, simply paste in Alice's password here, save it. Yep. Oh, idiot. Why don't we edit the local copy of Etsy password? Yeah. All right, we're going to paste in Alice's hash, which is there. And because there's a hash here, then the system won't even attempt to look at the shadow file. It'll just take whatever password is here. We can save it. Well, now we need to get this back into where it belongs. So again, I can turn back to my PHP. Oh, sorry. sudo php r to run it from the command line. And we are going to simply do a rename password Etsy password and because the file already exists the rename function is actually going to overwrite it so now if I cat Etsy password I see that our hash is in it so now I can simply do an su to root use Alice's password for LIC3 and boom we now have root so if I cd to the root directory, and there is our second flag. So once I got out of the rabbit holes and uh, got into the shell and realized the easy way, this, this wasn't too hard. Um, join me next time for the, the next box I decide to do. Thank you for watching.